My name is Evelyn Reyes and I was diagnosed with stage 3C colon cancer in 2004. The first time I realized something was wrong was um, I was in a, on vacation in the Dominican Republic with a very good friend of mine and of course I was drinking all the Caribbean cocktails with coconut milk in them and every time I had one of these coconut milk drinks I would get a really really painful stomach ache and I thought it was the coconut milk giving me a stomach ache but it wasn't it was the colon cancer I was also having difficulty going to the bathroom but um I kind of just said oh it's the coconut milk I'm fine there's nothing wrong and that was in September of 2004 I came back to Boston and the stomach aches were sort of sporadic and then one day the stomach ache just got really 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 intense like on a Monday and then I called in sick to work that Monday and then the next day I'm like oh I still don't feel right and I thought I was constipated and I called my doctor Maybe I called my doctor on Wednesday. I called my doctor on Wednesday. I stayed home Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday I called my doctor and she said, why don't you take a laxative? So I took the laxative and that just made it worse. My stomach started to rumble. Um, I got, my belly got distended. I really couldn't eat large amounts. And then the next day I called in and I said, listen, this is not getting any better. You know, I want to come in. So they're like, all right, come in. And my regular doctor wasn't there. So a different doctor saw me, examined my stomach, and sent me for an x-ray. And when he came back in the room, he basically said, you are full of poop. And I said, oh, okay. He said, well, I'm going to refer you to get a CAT scan. I go and I have the CAT scan. At this point, I haven't eaten anything all day long because I just, I couldn't eat anything because I was so um, distended and bloated. I go and I have the CAT scan. And um, that was a nightmare because you have to drink all the contrast and of course I couldn't eat anything so I'm drinking this contrast with my stomach going crazy. And the technologist comes out after the CAT scan is done and he says, you've got a tumor in your colon. And I was in so much pain and just so tired from the entire day of being in the hospital that I said, well, how are you going to get that out of there? And he said, operate. And I'm like, what? operate and then at that point I was admitted into Brigham and Women's Hospital and that just started off the whole slew of um, operations and then after I had the operation to remove the tumor then my doctor told me that it was cancer. Cancer has changed my perspective on life immensely. I've always been a very positive and direct person but now that I've had cancer, it's, it's just sort of intensified that and I don't have a lot of patience for the, the dumb little things that worry some people and I don't, I just don't worry myself about a lot of things. I sort of see the bigger picture like I need to enjoy my life now because I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. So I enjoy the moment, I treat myself really well even though I, I've always you know, treated myself really well. I do the things that other people put off. Like, oh, you know, I want to go on a Caribbean vacation, but oh, I want to save. Oh, I want to do this. Uh, I can't take the time off from work. Or, you know, I figure out a way to take the time off from work, save up the money, and do what it is I want to do. It, cancer has just made me have such a, a sense of urgency because I always feel like I'm running out of time. Like I don't have a lot of time left. So if I don't do those things now, I might not have an opportunity to do them later. So that's how cancer has changed my life. My friends and my family have reacted. Of course, they were extremely hurt and scared that they were going to lose me. Um, I come from a family where my mother is the center of everything and I have an older brother so it's basically just the three of us and then our extended family but um, everyone was very supportive my mother nursed me through all my four surgeries and uh, my brother was there to make me laugh and you know to tell me jokes and my aunts were all there cooking and helping my mother to you know do the things that she couldn't do so that she could spend time with me and my friends have also been very supportive. I have a large, large group of friends and I'm very, very social. So when I, and this is a, an example of how they've um, been supportive. I, when I had my, 
my chemotherapy, I had uh, six months of chemo every other week, so there were 12 sessions. I made out a spreadsheet and I told everybody, you know, the chemotherapy lasts about maybe five, five and a half hours every other Wednesday, so I'm going to need people to come with me and stay with me. So I made out a schedule and, you know, I sent out a massive email. I said, these are the times, these are the dates. I need to know who's going to come on what day. And then the bottom said, this is what you do. You know, feel free to bring me snacks and magazines and books and, you know, a foot massage here and there wouldn't hurt. And um, all my friends did that. They all came. They took time off from work. And sometimes I'd be just so tired that I would fall asleep on them in the middle of a sentence. And, you know, when I woke up, they were still there. So my friends have been very supportive that way, and my family as well. They, they took excellent, excellent care of me. Uh, my daily life has been affected somewhat. Um, I'm more tired all the time. Um, I don't want to work anymore, but I have to because I need the health insurance because I never know when the cancer is going to come back, but um, I just, I, I find it difficult to be motivated to work. I want to do something else, and I find that it's sort of like a vicious circle. You know, I want my daily life to be different, but I can't quit my job and do that because I need the health insurance. So, my daily life is pretty much the same as it has always been. What, what really is affected in my, my daily life is my thinking. I look at situations and I'm like, what are these people doing? You know, don't they know? Life is too precious. Stop worrying about these, you know, little things and worry about bigger things and love each other and, and get along. But, you know, one voice sometimes doesn't make a difference. You know, I need more people to help me to, I need more people to think like me. <laughs>